What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 53 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are good. Today it is the start of our Europa League group stage campaign. Yes, I've said Europa League. Of course, if you missed last episode, it was probably the episode of the series. I don't want to say what the scores were. Watch it. Enjoy the, the agony, the ecstasy, everything in between. It was a classic, but yes, Europa League draw has been made. Um, we are only about a half month ahead of where we were last time out. And, uh, well, if we just look at our group here, you can see we are in a group with Ajax, Locomotive, Moscow, and also FC Luzern, who, um, well, I feel like in this group, it's perhaps easier than some of the other groups we've had. We were the third seed, uh, Locomotive Moscow being second seed and Ajax being the favourites to get out of the group. Today we are going to be starting things off with the game against Ajax. Uh, one thing just to be aware of um, is you'll notice that the Europa League games go on this year till, well, January, which is kind of nice actually because um, it benefits us in a weird way in terms of spacing back perhaps out this season and pacing things a little bit better. Uh, the reason for that is it is the Qatar World Cup year. So in FM, the Qatar World Cup does happen. Um, most of the major leagues have a break in kind of November, December time. We have a mini break of sorts in November, which does see uh, our fixture schedule get more kind of crowded earlier on as a result. Um, but yeah, basically all the other major leagues are going to have a break. I don't know how many of our players are going to be impacted. I don't think that many will be. But um, yeah, just worth being aware of that. I feel like this year as well, we probably won't do every single game within the Europa League as a live com. Although next episode, I might do the Locomotive Moscow and the Millwall... Uh, Millwall? Motherwell. Uh, it's the reserve team though. I was going to say I might do the game against Motherwell. That isn't that interesting when it's their reserve team. Maybe we'll do Locomotive Moscow and Glenavon. Because really, Glenavon and Locomotive Moscow. Two big games for us either side of, well, a weekend essentially. Thursday and a Saturday, the two matches. Um... Although we've got Ajax here as well. The the fixture scheduling around the Qatar World Cup is bizarre, isn't it? So actually, we'll do today's episode against Ajax. And then next episode, we'll do Ajax and Locomotive Moscow. Then we'll do something in between. Maybe a league game. Maybe one of the games against Luzon. We'll play it by ear. You know what? I should have planned this before I started the live com. I didn't. I will live to regret it. Anyway, since you were last here, just a few games. We'll go through the, the bigger of the games. You can see against Ballymina, a 2-0 win to start things off. Good result this one, just in right with both of the goals for us. Uh, pretty convincing performance all in all. Um, yeah, right, got two goals, took him off, just rested him a little bit. And against Balimino, who have been a emerging powerhouse. I want to say powerhouse, that might be generous to them. But certainly a team who have pushed us in the last couple of seasons. Um, they gave us a tough game, but we did come out on top. A good little 2-0 win there. The next game we had was against Armagh City. Uh, and as you can see here, it finished 4-0. Uh, that was in the Northern Irish Football League Cup. A competition I expect to do well in. Of course, we got knocked out of it early last year at the hands of Glenavon. Hopefully, we can turn things around and win it again this year, that cup competition. Anyway, our next game against Glen Tor and a team who have been fairly prevalent here. Uh, two goals from set pieces for us. The first of which was a corner that wasn't properly dealt with by them and Stevie Pestridge was lurking away at the back post. And, uh, well, Craig Bannon scored a set piece. The Scottish centre-attacking mid with a tidy long-range effort into that top corner. Keeper couldn't get to it. And, uh, yeah, a good little 2-0 win there as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, the most recent game was against Ards. We won that 1-0. You can see John Morgan, first ever senior goal for him. Um, we did get a sending off in the game, but we held on. All in all, though, um, a good little way to bounce back after the disappointment that was narrowly missing out on Champions League football, of course, last year. Just to look at the league table, you can see that Glenavon currently tied with us on points, but we do have a game in hand. Um, that game in hand is going to be, as you can see here, against Cliftonville, who are they're doing okay. They've only lost one game in seven, so we can't afford to underestimate them. Um, just looking here, you can see in terms of average ratings, Paul O'Connor leading the way, which is particularly exciting. Hopefully, we're going to see more of that from him. Before we go any further, we have a transfer, and actually, it's a new foreign player, because of course we sold Lucas Gran to Celtic, and we have the foreign player rule of any age. Now, you'll notice my transfer budget and wage budget are still pretty high. Now, the reason for that being is the player that we've signed is a player you will have heard of. Um, I imagine most of you will have heard of, at least. Uh, but we've got him in on loan till the end of the year, and that player, drumroll please, is Musa Sissoko, Sissoko from Villarreal. Yes, he was unhappy on deadline day. He got offered to me. It was like, do you, want, do you want to loan this guy? And I thought, you know what? He can play out on the wing if we need him to. He's a good little centre mid. 
why the hell not get a big name in so the French international joins us we're paying £11,000 a week wages for him which is only 20% of his actual salary but it is obviously in our terms it's like a ludicrous sum of money to be paying someone every week in fact it's double the next highest earner in Lille but I actually feel like he's going to be able to offer us quite a lot as a central midfielder with a lot of experience Anyway, he is going to play today, so we'll see how he gets on on his live commentary debut, and we are going to be taking on Ajax, so it'd be good to get off to a good start, given the fact that we've got to play Ajax in our first two games of the competition. In this home game, I'd very much hope that we can get a result against them. Uh, when it comes to our team, it's a team that kind of picks itself in a lot of ways. Glenn Dining's still not fully fit, otherwise he'd probably come in for Bannon. But the rest of the team is fairly self-explanatory. In goal we go with Jared Thompson. Still yet to make his international debut for Northern Ireland. But was called up in the national team in the most recent international break. As was Robert Downey here. Unfortunately he didn't make an appearance yet. But expect this guy in the coming months I imagine to break into the Northern Irish national team. Which is very very exciting for a player who was uh, from our own academy. Has played as you can see here over the last three years a decent amount of football. And I expect him to be our starting centre back this year. If the average ratings were anything to go by, he is going to be a top, top player for years to come. Of course, alongside him, we do go with McCoy, who has very much become an international uh, for the Northern Irish national team. At left back, we have Kieran Kane. Again, another Northern Irish international. It's really great to see so many of our players who we've really put kind of stock in and faith in, really, you know, making strides on the international stage. It really is a sign um, of the progress we're making. Of course, the money that we have here at Lyon is a massive help, but traditionally, you know, the better Northern Irish talent would make its way over to England, make its way over to the Football League there, and often, you know, craft out a name there for themselves, those kind of players. But we've held on to them for the most part here, and um, we're starting to kind of get rewarded for that. Anyway, at right back, we're going to go with the side book. He's improved a lot this year continually. He's also now getting more comfortable at playing right back, which is good to see. Centre of midfield, we're going to go with Liotta alongside Sissoko. So it's an all-French affair in the centre of the midfield. O'Connor out on the left. Dixon is going to play on the right, I think, today. He's had a bit of a disappointing start to the season, but maybe this is where you can really get that season kick-started. Did have an injury, of course. And then it's going to be Bannon and Justin Wright leading the line for us today. On the bench, we've got plenty of options. Lille is there, lacking a little bit of conditioning. So we're just going to, you know, play it safe with him. Stevie Pestridge, an option. Glenn Dining, still not really fit. Returns, um, well, he completes his, re uh, his rehabilitation tomorrow. And that's when he'll go back into training. But if we absolutely need to, we might be able to take a chance on him today. The other options on the bench. We've got Simon Carlisle, of course, a player with a lot of potential for the future. 18 years young. Um... I think he will get a lot of first-team football this year, despite Sissoko's addition to the team. Anyway, let's get into this match. It's against Ajax. It's a big game. In terms of their team, they've got Dusan Tadic. They've still got, uh, is it Gravenberch? Uh, I used this guy in FM this year. He was tremendous for me. Looks like he might not have developed quite so well here. David Neres as well is a top, top player. So... We have to be a little bit wary here. Um, kind of interesting that they've got so many players who I recognise. You know, players like Tagliafico and Onana, um, players they've, who haven't left the club, um, who obviously have tremendous potential. It seems like this Ajax team does actually have a few of its youngsters, you know, still at the team. With that in mind, we're going to have to be wary. In some ways, it's kind of interesting that we're taking on another team with such a real emphasis on youth. You know, it's two teams with very similar ideologies, at least, um, you know, I guess in real life as well. I was going to say at least in FM where obviously we put high stock in young players. But realistically, with Lance, um, you know, five year plan, which we're coming to the end of here in FM. And the aim really is to have, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the first team squad homegrown. Um I guess the ideologies and that you know the plan that planning that Lan has around its youth academy is actually quite similar to Ajax's in a lot of ways. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. We're going to play the controlling system. We are at home. This is the kind of game where I'd like us to try and seize some of the ball. Really have possession. They are playing particularly defensively with two centre defence in mids. That might cause us some problems in terms of when it comes to trying to break them down. But we'll see how we get on. They have an early set piece here. Tadic with it. Uh, whips it into Christensen and actually it falls to Vieira, the uh, Gerver, um, who actually gets a relatively easy tap in. Not the ideal start, I guess, on the half an hour mark. As much as it wouldn't be ideal to beat Ajax, I don't necessarily go into this game expecting us to win. And I do feel like the games against Locomotive, Mo uh, Locomotive Moscow are going to be more deciding, I guess, ultimately, when it comes to... Uh, you know, just how we get on in terms of getting out the group stage again like we did last year. I feel like 
Um, last year, of course, in a group with Manchester United and Lille, we showed our potential as a team who can really cause an upset. That is something I very much want to be replicating again this year. But at the same time, we have to, and I feel like I need to stress this, our team is not very good. Like, our team would struggle, I feel like, in the championship, realistically speaking. So the fact that we got to the Europa League knockout stage was a massive, massive achievement. Of course, we're going to try and replicate that success again here. But I think it'd be wrong to kind of go in with this mindset of we should be finishing second. Like, I hope that we can finish second. Don't get me wrong in our group. But we are not the favourites by any means to get second. You know, Locomotive Moscow, despite the fact they are a lesser known household name, I guess, of European football, aren't going to be easy. But we have the upset potential. And, well, Craigie Bannon has shown that there. The Cyborg with the ball in. Back post header for Bannon, a really tidy header, nicely worked, and well, having conceded somewhat disappointingly from a set piece, we get a goal here. You can see Sissoko involved in the build-up play. Cyborg on his weaker foot whips it in. It's a beautiful header by Bannon. It's got to be said, directed with real accuracy there into that top corner. Onana with absolutely no chance. And well, can we keep that momentum going? Two minutes later, another highlight for us. Bannon switches the play to O'Connor. Has been in great form in the league, but dispossessed this time by Tadic. Now we do need to regroup defensively. We need to collect ourselves. Robert Downey here going to mop up the mess, I hope. Let's not have any defensive nonsense here. Jared Thompson... I'll be honest, he's, he's grown on me as a keeper. A few years ago, in fact, for the last few years, I've been thinking about replacing him. I do feel like he's improved as a player in that time, but also he's been less error-prone. I feel like in saying that, I've completely jinxed this and he's going to completely ball something up in the, the you know in a major episode this season. But right now he's doing okay. And while we're on the attack, Dixon! Narrowly over the crossfire there. That was a tremendous effort from him. Whizzed over. 62% of the ball in our possession. Yes, Ajax have created the better chances, but we do find ourselves all square. And actually, at half-time, 1-1 one, one would not be a bad result whatsoever here against Ajax. In fact, that would be particularly good. But I don't want players to get complacent, despite the fact we are performing against the odds here. I'm going to tell them I expect something better. I expect more. I'm far from happy. Can we now, with those words echoing in our ears, do something here? You can see Paul O'Connor, wrist ligament damage. Set piece, that's a pen. That is a pen, just in right to step up. We don't have the best record from penalties. Can we put it behind us today? Just in right, number 97. I'm going to be honest, I thought it was feeling he's going to miss it. Hmm. I will pull a surprise face. In fact, the keeper has saved that. So the keeper deserves a lot of credit. Can, can Downey Jr. at the back post just head it in now? I mean, there you go. I'm like a, I'm like a wizard. I've just predicted the future twice. I knew what was going to happen from the corner, and I knew what we were going to miss the penalty. If anyone wants the lottery numbers, just ask me down in the comments. It was two one up here. We made the most of a set piece. It's something that we've done so much this year. The Iron Man himself, seventeen jumping. He likes to get up in the air. He's got up in the air. It's his fifth goal of the season, and having missed a penalty in the fifty-first minute, we've got and scored in the fifty-first minute. A little bit bizarre when you look at the score sheet to see that. But yes, that is what has happened here. O'Connor's on a booking. He's not at the best game. Right missing that penalty looks not so happy. So we're going to take him and Lille off. Just get some fresh legs in the final third. Cyborg's performed great. In fact, the defence as a whole has been fairly faultless today other than the, obviously the one goal they scored from a set piece. And in this second half, they've had one shot on target all half. Ten minutes left. I know someone's going to be screaming in the comments, Jack, go defensive! I don't want to invite pressure. They've had one shot since they first scored. I'm going to chance it. Tadic, set piece. The free kicks in FM19 do scare me because they go in quite a lot, at least in the current patch. I, I do think that will be something that gets changed in the next match engine update, but it does scare me. Right, ten seconds left. We're about to beat Ajax, folks. And I'll be honest, we've had a little bit of luck. We did miss a penalty, though. And actually, I don't feel like they contributed a whole lot to that game. There was not a whole lot of highlights, but we took the chances that came our way. And against all the odds, we've got a win, which does ease the pressure a little bit off us. And you can see actually here that Ajax game that we have is just next week. And the game after that against Locomotive Moscow just one week later as well. So... That is what we're going to do next time out. You can see two league games sandwiched between both of those games. Fixture congestion, not exactly ideal, but we'll try and manage it as best we can. And we'll hopefully, I'll see you guys next time for this double header. It's going to be a big one. Uh, and, uh, well, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. What a result that is, by the way. That is absolutely tremendous. And um, hopefully that can, well, put us in good stead now to go on and get a good 
well, result throughout. You can see actually, I was going to say they've drawn. They haven't drawn. They actually play later. Let's see. Let's just see what the score is between Locomotive Moscow and uh, I'm trying to remember who the other team was. Was it Luzern? I don't know that many Swiss teams. I think it was Luzern. Was it Luzern? I don't know. Answers on a postcard. I mean, I don't need a postcard sending because we're about to find out. But, um, yeah, it was Luzern. I think they have a tycoon owner in the game, which is kind of interesting because obviously we have a tycoon owner as well. Anyway, continuing forward here. A draw would be fantastic. I'm expecting a locomotive Moscow win. That's exactly what's happened. So, no real shocks there. It does mean that if we could get four points from our next two games against Ajax and locomotive Moscow... I would be very, very confident of us getting through in what will be a slightly elongated Europa League campaign. But anyway, I've rambled on for long enough today. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. What a result that is. That is absolutely tremendous. And hopefully we can keep it going. And I'll see you guys next time out. But we will be travelling um, to the Johan Cruyff Arena. And also, what's Locomotive Moscow's ground called? It's literally, it's literally called Locomotive Moscow. Okay, well that's underwhelming. Right, I'm going to go on that bombshell. See you guys later. Thank you for watching. It is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.